Ligari's Asphalt Repair Kit is one of the strongest asphalt resurfacers on the market. Typical asphalt sealers put a thin, tar-like material over the old asphalt without adding any type of structure to it. Ligari's Asphalt Repair is a game changer, renewing your asphalt quickly, easily, and affordably. Ligari Asphalt Repair adds an entirely new surface to your asphalt with substantial durability, adding years of life to your asphalt. This is not a traditional painted-on, tar-like material. Ligari Asphalt Repair is an industrial-grade resurfacer loaded with polymers for flexibility and crushed marble for strength. In traditional Ligari fashion, we've answered one of the most frustrating issues of asphalt with one of the greatest products the industry has ever seen. Before we get started on today's video, we wanted to let you know that we're on our way to 800,000 subscribers and we've noticed that a huge percentage of you guys that watch our videos every week are not subscribed to our channel. It only takes seconds out of your day to press that subscribe button, especially if you enjoy this content. We launch videos every week so you can get notified every time there's a new one. Thanks for all your support. We hope you enjoy the video. All right guys, I'm gonna go over how to mix a 500 square foot asphalt repair kit and obviously the, the tool supplies you're gonna need. So what we have first, obviously the product. So we have our li liquid polymer. This is for the bags. Our bags don't mix with water, they mix with a special liquid polymer. This is a black liquid polymer, which is gonna give you that look of asphalt. And then we have the two bags of our concrete overlay. So two bags goes to one five gallon bucket and then we have our liquid modifier what this is going to do is give us extended working time uh, hotter temps it's going to help stuff like that so this is basically the product and then the supplies we'll need for applying it is we're going to need a pump up sprayer we're going to be hydrating the asphalt with water cooling it down that way it's not sucking out all the moisture of the actual cement and then we have our 32 gallon trash can. We like the brute force trash cans because they're relatively flat on the bottom. There's no nothing sticking up to catch your drill. So this is what we'll mix in. We have a smaller bucket. We can scoop it out to, to pour into the buckets once it's all mixed. We have our drill with just a, just a mortar mixer on it. So that's gonna mix up the material. Wear our mask because we're gonna have powders and stuff coming out when we're mixing and then gloves. Gloves are good to wear so you're not mucking out your hands. But that's basically what we need for step one. So I'll kind of go into how we're gonna mix and then I'll have someone jump in here, pour the bags in for me. First thing we're gonna do, we are gonna open up the polymer. Break this seal here. And then we're gonna dump half of this in and then we're gonna mix the other half that's in the bucket and then we'll dump the rest of that in because sometimes the polymers will settle in the mix here. So I'm gonna dump half of this out. All right, so there's half. Now I'm gonna mix this up. All right guys, so we're just gonna mix this up, get hitting the bottom, the sides. 
getting anything that's settled in there. And then I did forget to mention one thing, a clean out bucket. We fill with water, makes it easy to clean out the drill, stuff like that. So now we can pour the rest in. And you can clean those buckets out and reuse those to dump the material in if you want. That's an option. All right, so we got the liquid polymer in. We mixed that up, made sure all the stuff that's settled in it is mixed in. Now we're gonna take our liquid modifier and we're gonna add this while I spin the drill. All right, so now we're ready to add the bags. Easiest way to open the bags, obviously you can cut it, you can take a knife and cut it, but if you just pinch the side here, it'll tear relatively easy. And then we just open that up. Same thing, pinch the side, tear it. All right, so I'll have Tim jump in here. We'll put our masks on, and then what we want to do as I'm mixing, we want to slowly add that powder. We don't want to just dump it in so we get a bunch of chunks that are falling to the bottom. They'll just kind of sit there, and they won't mix in well. So we're going to dump slow. I'm going to fully mix it, the drill high speed, and he's just going to slowly pour that in. Just make sure you guys are wearing your masks. You can also hook a vacuum up and just kind of have the vacuum sitting here, and that'll suck some of the dust out as well. All right, so now the dust is mixed in there. The, the cement powder, um, I can take my mask off. Now I wanna mix this for about two to three minutes, going up and down, make sure we mix it really good because the last thing we want is to have it chunky clumps when we go to pour it out. All right, so we're basically materials mixed, ready to go. I'll clean off the, the paddle wheel. Make sure we clean that shaft off because that'll build up. That's why you wear gloves, guys. You're always gonna get it on your hands. It'll wash off, but gloves will make it a lot easier. So two bags, two, two decent, you know, two strong guys can pick it up. Obviously, it's a lot easier just scooping out of a smaller bucket. So I'll just kind of show you what that looks like. I'm just gonna dump this in. And then transfer it to Tim's bucket until we get enough out where it's really light and easy to pick up. You guys notice we got a, a tin over us. We're not doing this right in direct sunlight. Do it in the shade, get a tin out. And it's highly recommended that you mix this stuff and apply it morning time when it's cool out, it's not hot. It's gonna be a lot easier to work with and apply. We've just, we've done this a lot, so it's a lot easier for us, but first time users, stuff like that, make sure you guys are doing this cooler temps morning time or you can do it in the evening time as well.
So we can just spray this off when we're done. Um, I'm just gonna set it here for now. We'll just throw that away when it gets hard and then we can pick this up and finish filling up the buckets. Now these can get heavy, so it's better to have more buckets, fill them halfway, a lot easier to manage and dump out of. And the last thing you'll want to do, we don't have a hose out here, so we are just got clean buckets of water. Try to clean this out as best you can because this will set up relatively flat, fast on this plastic. He's mixing things and then you got to pressure wash it off. I mean, the stuff just does not come off. So clean it best you can. Obviously a hose is going to be a lot faster, but. So before we start, I want to go over a few things, guys. Make sure you're doing this in the morning, in the evening when it's cooler out. Obviously black asphalt and sun, right? Doesn't mix. It's going to make that asphalt really hot. That's going to cut down your working time. You're gonna have to hydrate a lot more. So again, do this stuff in the, in, the, in the morning time, when it's shade out, stuff like that, evening time, just keep that in mind. Second thing, we gotta prehydrate the asphalt because we wanna get some moisture in that asphalt so it's not sucking all that moisture out of our overlay. So what I'm gonna do before we even start coating, I'm gonna start prehydrating with water. And we're just using water, simple pump up sprayer and I'm gonna prehydrate this and you'll see the difference once the water hits it. It's very dry, even though asphalt um, isn't relatively have moisture in it, the, the water's gonna help with the working time of the overlay. So we're gonna prehydrate the asphalt. And again, this is morning time, even though the sun's out, it's still morning. Um, but again, just try to do this stuff morning time when it's cooler out. Don't try to do this stuff middle of the day when it's 100 degrees out. That's gonna make that asphalt really, really hot. And then when we apply it, I'm just gonna use a simple squeegee. Goes really fast, makes it really easy to apply it with the squeegee. So I'll kind of show you pre-hydrating. And then while I'm actually coating, Tim will be hydrating for me as well as we're coating. So notice the difference in color, right? Where I've prehydrated versus no hydration. So you can tell that's gonna give us a little more working time. And that's kind of all, all I'm doing is I'm just prehydrating where we're gonna start. Now, if you're doing a large, maybe a large driveway or entryway to a driveway, you can also get your hose out. We just don't want standing water. Notice how I don't have anything really pooling up anywhere. We try to keep that from happening. We don't want a bunch of puddles of water. That's gonna really thin out the overlay. So that's basically what we call prehydrating, getting this surface ready to apply the coating to. And we're outside right by the road, so we're gonna have some, some vehicle traffic noise there. But uh, so we'll get, the, we'll get the product ready to dump out and then I'll kind of go over the process of actually coating. But again, guys, prehydration is key. Also coating early morning, evening. You do not want to do this when it's hot out because that asphalt is going to be over 100 degrees and it's going to really cut down your working time. All right, guys, so prehydration's going on. Now I'm ready to pour, got all our stuff mixed. Notice they're all in the shade. You want to keep your buckets in the shade. You don't want them sitting out in the sun. And Tim's gonna constantly hydrate for me and I'm gonna pour the beads and then squeegee it around. So when I pour my bead out, I like to get close to the edge as I can. That way I don't have to push the material up there a lot. And then I'm gonna hold my squeegee at an angle and I'm just gonna apply a little pressure and the, the crushed marble in this mix is gonna put it down at the same thickness everywhere. So the squeegee basically spreads it out and that crushed marble makes it go down at the same thickness everywhere. Get it close to that tape edge. Now you can see we push the ass the gravel back. This is going to come back on a lot, so I'm not really worried about 
being dirty here. We cleaned as close as we could to that gravel. Obviously, we're going to feather that back out and it's going to fill all that in. Now, notice we've taped everywhere high, right? We didn't tape right down to the edge of the asphalt. We taped high. All I want to do is make sure I get my coating up to that tape edge so when we pull it, it's a nice straight line. And if you guys wind up taping too low, this coating is going to lock that tape in. You're going to wind up cutting it out. So make sure you're, when you're taping everything off, tape it high. And then just make sure you push that product all the way up to that tape edge and when you pull it you're gonna have a nice straight line any spots that are tough to get sometimes asphalt's real chunky on edges we'll just use a paintbrush paint it up to the tape line and then we can keep going Again, make sure you're getting everywhere up to those tape edges. Once we get that edge done, you can start moving really quick. So I'm just holding that squeegee at an angle, applying pressure. And then when I'm doing spreading it out, I'm keeping that material, that bead of that material on the middle of the squeegee. If I don't, it's gonna wind up pushing out the front like this. Now I left a big bead out there, I gotta stop. I gotta come back, clean that up. So the easiest way is to just watch where that bead's at on your squeegee. Keep it right here in the middle, don't let it go past, and it's never gonna push out the front. So I like to come down my edges on both sides a little bit, make sure they're nice and cleaned up. And then now all I gotta do is focus going back and forth in the middle. Once I catch up to my edge, I just do the same thing. Come down my edge a little, go back and forth. Now, if you guys are coating next to say grass, you would just edge that grass. You would let that run over the edge a little. Um, Obviously, we don't have grass here. We're just coating up to the gravel, but very simple. Clean that edge up, let it flow over that edge. And then once it's flowed over and the grass grows back, it'll look like the whole thing was redone. You guys can notice Tim, Tim hasn't stopped hydrating for me. He's just constantly hydrating before I get there. I'm always going on a little bit of a wet surface without puddling. So typically you want a guy running the, the water for hydration. You want someone on the squeegee and it's nice to have someone pouring the beads out. That'll make your guys' projects go really smooth and fast. That way everyone's got a job to do and no one's stopping. Another thing is we don't want to run the product out like what I'm gonna do right here just for an example so we kind of ran this product all the way out we don't have a wet edge there now we want to stay away from that we always want to keep a bead of product on that edge and that's going to keep it from drying out fast on us 
So if you're running out on an, on an edge or on a spot, just get some more material, put it on there, and keep that wet edge going everywhere. And again, I'm getting down to where I'm gonna run out of my wet edge. So I wanna stop, get some more out there. So you can see how nice it looks with just that one coat. It's a very, very forgiving product. Even if you have maybe a trial edge somewhere or a thick spot, it's asphalt, it's gonna be black. You're not really gonna notice any of that stuff. So it's very, very forgiving to, for as an install perspective and even doing this your first time, there's really no techniques or experience that you need to put this stuff down at all. So you can see I'm kind of getting a kind of a weird shape out here. So I'm gonna just kind of straighten this back out. So we're getting close to our stopping point. So I don't want to be pouring out big beads, right? I don't want to have to pick a bunch of product up. So I'm going to start pouring out smaller beads after I get this spread out. Um, but again, once you get to that edge, be cautious of, you know, whoever's pouring beads, you know, don't want, don't have them pour out half a bucket right towards the edge because it is a pain to pick it up. If that happens, just take like a dust pan, scoop it in a dust pan dump it in the bucket, or you can even get some cardboard, scrape it up, dump it in a bucket, but just try to minimize that. It's gonna make it a lot easier if you don't have to pick a bunch up. Smaller bees now that I'm close to the edge or our stopping point. And obviously, you know, maybe putting some paper here, plastic that we'd have to be, be so precise on this edge will make it easier as well. And I'll just take the pole off. And I can finish this up.
All right, guys, so that's it. So we'll let this set up, and you can see it's already drying. If we walk over here, it's already drying out. In these spots where we started. So once this is all dry, we'll show you guys how to apply the sealer. But just keep in mind, right, we want to apply pressure on that squeegee as we're going back and forth, keep it at an angle, and always keep that bead in the middle of that squeegee so it's not pushing out the front. So always hydrate, and then make sure you have enough guys on the job to help you. Last thing you want to do is be running around, having to stop, mix more, stuff like that. Make sure you got enough people to help you, and these projects will go real smooth. But I mean, compared to old asphalt, it's such an awesome product and it's so user friendly to apply. Very, very forgiving as far as um, having no experience applying it. Um, so we'll let this set up and we'll show you guys the sealer next. So I'm gonna go over how to apply our sealer. On this one, we're gonna be using our WB sealer. It's a, it's a gloss sealer. When you guys go and order your asphalt repair kit, you'll be able to pick what sealers you want. Um, and we'll obviously probably add to those as well for different options. But for right now, we're just gonna be doing our WB sealer on this. It's been proven, it works great. So real simple, we're gonna do two to three thin coats and it's gonna dry quick. So we'll be able to go on it again really fast. We don't have to wait, right, 24 hours to do another coat. We simply spray it once it's dry. Um, we can apply that second coat and then the third coat. Um, a few things though, make sure you guys are doing the sealer evening time, morning time. Um, obviously we recommend doing, doing the asphalt repair coat during the morning and then during the evening do your sealer coat. So you wanna be able to seal that same day. Wait for this truck to pass here. Um, so yeah, you don't want to you don't want to put the asphalt uh, down, right? You don't want to coat your asphalt. Let it sit. If it rains on it, if water gets on it, it can turn it white in those spots. So we do want to be able to seal that before it gets rained on or water hits it. So we recommend doing your asphalt sur resurfacing morning time and then seal it that evening. So try to do that. Try to do it same day. That's going to give you the best results. And then you're doing morning time for the asphalt resurfacing, it's cool out. And then when you do your sealer evening, it's cool out as well. So we recommend doing that. That's gonna give you the best result. But for the sake of the video, we're just gonna seal this. Now, will it work in hot temps? Yes, it'll work in hot temps, but it's just gonna evaporate faster versus soaking in. So again, just for the sake of the video, I'm gonna spray it now, even though it's a little hot out, you guys are gonna see the application. Very simple, very, very forgiving. And again, we're doing thin coats we don't want to get it on too thick we don't want it to puddle it's going to go on white and then it's going to dry clear and i'll kind of show you what it looks like on the application so if you guys have anything you don't want to get the sealer on obviously tape plastic that off you could cardboard this we're not really worried about this this foundation wall here so this is really all it takes really really simple process to seal And again, I'm not worried about getting 100% coverage on this first coat. That's why we do two to three thinner coats. And it's very vital that you guys are sealing this before it gets wet. If you're gonna walk on it, make sure you got your, your feet clean. That way you're not leaving dirty footprints on it. And then obviously once we get the sealer on there, it's easy to clean. It's not gonna stain. And then I'm just using a simple pump up sprayer. We like the sprayers from Ace Hardware. They're relatively cheap and they always spray a nice fine mist. And you can see it's already dried where I started. So I can just go back and keep sealing. Now obviously it might take a little bit longer to dry out if you guys are doing this, you know, 
in the shade when it's cool out. And another thing, you shouldn't be doing this when it's windy. The last thing we want is a bunch of dust and debris to land in the sealer as we're sealing. So now the second coat, I'm gonna go the opposite direction and work my way out to the gravel. And then the third coat will do the same way I did the first coat. You can see I got a nice fine mist. I'm moving quick. I don't want this to puddle up anywhere. And it's always good to keep your sprayer pumped up. All right, so we'll let this kind of dry out and then I'll do that final pass. Um, but yeah, you can see how nice it looks already. And this is gonna help protect it from turning white. It's gonna make it easy to clean. Notice I'm always overlapping as well. I want to overlap just a little bit on each pass. There you have it, that's simple, but look how nice it looks. Three coats of sealer, it's nice and even now. And you have yourself a brand new asphalt surface. So now that the sealer's dry, everything's basically done. We can remove the tape, um, very simple process. I'm gonna show you guys. We wanna get this tape pulled up, especially if you're using this painter's tape. The longer it sits down and the more you step on it, it's gonna leave a lot of that sticky residue behind, so it's always good to peel that up as soon as you can. Now we got a nice clean edge there, and then as far as the walls go, same thing. Since we taped it high, this is gonna pull off really, really easily. And as long as we got that product all up to our tape edge, we're gonna have a nice straight line. It's gonna look really clean. So you can see how easy that pole is taping high. And it doesn't matter that we coated up the wall a little. It still looks nice and clean, easy to pull. And now we have a nice finished edge there. And there is a spot we're gonna come up to that I missed and you guys will be able to see what it looks like if you don't get all the way up to your tape edge. And that is right here. So I'll get out of the shadow here. But you can see where I didn't push up to the tape edge, it just kind of missed there. So kind of take note of that, make sure you're getting that product all the way up to your tape edge.
All right, guys, so tape's pulled, and then the last thing we would do is we would just push the gravel back here, flatten this off. Obviously, taking like a rake is going to be a lot easier, but it's that simple. Now, if you guys have like, um, maybe you have decorative rocks, basalt rocks next to your asphalt, you want to pull those away, let that go over the edge, and then you push those back same way. Same thing with your your grass cut an edge you can run it off the side that way when everything's done it looks like the whole thing was was uh re-poured or recoded, and you don't have spots on the top that you can see where the coating stops so always run those over your edges pull anything away push it back when you're done so there you have it that's the asphalt resurfacing process very very user friendly very forgiving and you can see the difference from old outdated looking asphalt to a freshly resurfaced asphalt with our asphalt repair kits.